Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about wands. What they are, what they're used for, and whether or not you actually need one in order to practice successful magic. So wands are one of those magical tools that seem to be completely synonymous with witchcraft. Especially in the modern age, with the assistance of the Harry Potter franchise, it seems odd to think of a witch or wizard without having a wand. But in real life, what are wands actually used for? What are they made of? How do you use them? What are they actually for? And do you actually need one? These are all questions that get asked a lot, especially by beginners, because a lot of the time wands are seen as a type of fantasy magic. Wands aren't highly talked about. You see them occasionally online or in witchcraft shops, but primarily you see them on TV, in films, in books. So what actually is the truth behind wands? So first things first, what is a wand? Well, quite simply, a wand is a tool for directing energy. It's an extension of yourself. It isn't the wand that creates the magic like you see in Harry Potter or on TV shows and movies. Instead, it is an extension of you. It's a prop, a tool that assists in manipulating, focusing and directing energy. That could be your personal energy, but it could be the energy of something you're channeling, whether you're drawing on the earth or on spirits or on the energies that are around. It is simply a way of focusing that scattered energy into a specific intention, item or person. Now wands are found all over the world in different shapes and forms, but they are found in both general witchcraft and also the religion of Wicca. Now within both of these, they can be ceremonial tools, but they definitely have more significance within Wicca. Now the wand can represent one of two elements. They can represent the air element or the fire element. So if you're interested in working out which ones represent which element for you, I would look into your specific tradition. If you don't follow any particular tradition, like a specific Wiccan tradition, I would suggest just going with whichever one you find associates the element the best. So for me, wands are the air element and athames are the fire element. I'm not a follower of the Wiccan religion or any of the Wiccan paths, so I have personally chosen that for myself. So if you're in a similar position to me, then pick and choose which element, whether air or fire, represents the wand best for you. But for anyone that's interested, a wand on a Wiccan altar is generally placed to the right-hand side of the altar. That's generally where it sits, for anyone that's specifically interested in Wiccan altar setups. So what specifically can a wand be used for? Well, typically a wand is used to cast and close a magical circle during ceremony, ritual, higher magics, anything that requires an energy boundary or bubble, you can use a wand to assist in casting that energy. They can also be used to direct energy into charms and enchantments of objects. They can be used in ceremonial work to work with other people to bless and consecrate items. They can also be used as representation of the air or the fire element depending on your personal belief system. More specifically, they can be used for pushing energy into specific tools, so into candles, into crystals, into herbs and incense. They can also be used to energetically sew with, so you can do binding spells with wands. You can also use them to push energy into specific items if you're creating charms and talismans and amulets, so they can be exceptionally useful magical tools. So what does a wand look like? And what does it need to be made of? So whether you are buying a wand or whether you're wanting to make it yourself, the items that you choose to make your wand out of are kind of significant. Now, if you are part of a more traditional system like Wicca that has more specific guidelines on magical tools, wands are generally seen as made of wood. Often they are a wood that you are particularly drawn to, or you can use your birth wood, which is found online if anyone's interested. Now within Wicca, traditionally, wands are seen as needing to be a specific length. 
generally it's from the crook of your elbow to the tip of your middle finger. Now mine is a little short, but because I'm not Wiccan, it doesn't really matter too much to me. But generally, that is how ones are selected within more traditional Wiccan practices. But a wand doesn't have to look like this, it doesn't even have to be made of wood. Wands can come in all shapes and sizes. They can be made of wood, they can be made of crystal, they can be made of antler. They can also be made of glass if that's what you're interested in. Wands are primarily a means of conducting magical energy and because of that you just need to be able to conduct magical energy through it. Now typically wands are made of conductive materials such as wood, glass, metal and crystal but that doesn't mean that you can't have a wand that's made of plastic. I know lots of people who use their Harry Potter wands from the Harry Potter studio tour which are made of resin as their actual magical wands in ceremony. Although they might not necessarily conduct energy as good, as long as you feel that they work well for you, that's all that really matters. No one can really tell you that your wand isn't a wand, because for you, it probably is. Simply put, wands simply have to conduct your magical energy. So you should really pick a tool that you feel drawn to, that you feel really connected to. This can be a specific wand, or it can be a type of material that you know you work really well with. So if you know that you struggle to work with plastic, then stay clear of plastic and try something like wood or copper or crystal. If you feel drawn to a very specific crystal, you can get a wand in that particular crystal and work with that for your magical practices. The world is practically your oyster when it comes to wands. You can really pick and choose the materials, lengths and styles that really suit you. Wands can be as long as this, even longer, and they can be as short as this. It really depends on how you personally feel and the kind of situation you're in. If you are open and you're able to do more ceremonial practices, a wand that's this size is perfectly acceptable. But if you're in the broom closet and if other people don't know that you practice witchcraft or wicca, then a wand more like this size might be more suitable for your situation. And that's really key when it comes to choosing a wand. It's all well and good having a really, really fancy wand, but if you can never use it, then what's the point in having it? Wands are meant to be practical. If it's just gonna be sitting around on a shelf the entire time, then maybe finding an alternative is a better way of going about it. Now, the next topic is, do you need to buy a wand? Do you need to make a wand? Or does it have to be gifted to you? Now, this is one of those kind of debated topics, and it really all depends on your tradition, religion, or path as to whether or not you're going to want to make a wand, buy a wand, or have a wand given as a gift. I personally am a firm believer that we need to have a connection to a magical tool before we can use it effectively. We need to be drawn to it to be able to put energy into it really easily. And so for me, getting given a wand as a gift isn't necessarily the best thing because I might simply not be drawn to it. I might not be personally connected to it. So for me, I would say that if you are new and you're getting your first wand, then actually either buying or making a wand is the better option rather than having one given to you as a gift. It's also the most practical option if you're in the broom closet because you're not gonna know anyone that's gonna be willing to gift you a wand. So between buying and making, it really is entirely dependent on you. My first ever wand I actually made myself all of my other ones I've actually bought in and I have found that the ones that I have bought for myself I have just as much success with as I had with my first ever wand. But again, it all depends on personal preference. If you would rather make a wand for yourself, that is completely fine. If you don't want to make one yourself or aren't in a position where you can, you don't have the time or the resources, then buying a wand in is really, really useful and gives you a probably higher quality end item than one you can make yourself. So if you're interested in buying a wand that someone else has made, I would suggest taking a look at Etsy, mainly because most of the people on there are practitioners themselves that are making wands for other practitioners. So it's kind of good to support the community in that way. And they can come in a huge range of different prices. You can go from small wooden hand-carved wands all the way up to silver wands. Really all depends on your personal price point and what you want to personally work with. 
Now, if you want to make a wand yourself, you don't necessarily need a wood turner like you would use to create a wand like this. A wand can be as simple as a twig that you pick up off the ground. As long as you feel drawn to it and as long as you can direct energy through it, that's really all that matters. A lot of people actually use pencils as their first wands because they are highly conductive, easy to find and very discreet. So it's definitely something to look at if you are in the broom closet and also wanting to use a wand. A pencil could be a really good option. Now, if you're wanting to make your own wand, probably you're gonna to want to be making it out of wood. Now there's a couple of ways you can go about sourcing the wood. You could buy in some wood that you can then make the wand from, but I would personally go out into your local woods or local environment and see if you can find a tree that you feel connected to. Now personally, I would work with that tree on an energetic level first before I chose whether or not I wanted to take the wood. So I would start forming a bond with the spirit of the tree itself, connect with it, work with it, sit and meditate by it, spend time with it. And then when you feel highly connected to that tree, you can either try to find a piece of fallen wood from that tree, which is what I would personally do, or if you can't find any and feel very closely connected to that specific tree, you can ask the tree's permission whether it is okay to take a small twig from that tree. I would not ever recommend anyone to start chopping off whole branches or going out with a saw. Just a small twig is enough to have that energy in your workings when it comes to using the wand. Now how you pick the tree really depends on you. You can go by your birth tree or you can go by a tree that you simply feel connected to. Now once you have this wood, if you have taken it from the tree, I would be sure to thank the tree after you've taken it and leave an offering. This can be of energy, this can be a small offering to spirits, whatever you feel works best with your personal tradition. Once you have the wood, it really is up to you how ornate or how simple you want the wand to be. Now a wand is simply a tool for directing energy, so just the piece of wood itself is enough. You can then call that your wand. Or you can go about stripping the wood off it, varnishing it, adding on symbols and sigils and runes and crystals, whatever you feel works best for your personal wand. They can be as simple or as intricate as you choose to make them. So you do what makes you feel comfortable with using that wand in your specific practice. Now, whether or not you've been given a wand, whether you've bought it or whether you've made it, it's a good idea if you've got it in from somewhere else to cleanse that wand before you start to get off any of that energy of other people who've touched it and handled it before you. Now, once that's done, depending on your tradition, you might want to consecrate that wand. Now, a consecration in the terms of using a tool is designed to set the intention for that item for magical purposes. So it's consecrated to act as a magical tool alongside you. It's not something that's done in all traditions, but if that's the kind of thing you're interested in doing, I would look up some kind of consecration rituals online. Some of them work with the elements, some of them work with spirits and ancestors. I would look for something that works best for you if you personally want to undertake a ritual like that. And then from that point on, that is your wand that you can use in your ceremony and ritual. But it doesn't have to be your only wand. And that's another question that I get asked really, really frequently is that, can I only have one wand? And simply put, no, you don't have to have just one wand. Now in some traditions, they believe that you should only have one wand and that the wand should be destroyed when you replace it with a new one but I personally don't work quite like that. So I would go with your specific path, tradition, or religion when it comes to what you do with magical tools. Personally, I find that situations change. If, for instance, you started off in the broom closet and you had a wand this size, and then when people started to know that you were a practitioner and you wanted a bigger wand, you could move up to a wand more like this size and still use this one as well. I personally use different ones in different ceremonies for different intentions and so I have a whole range of different ones for lots and lots of different things. 
So if you want more than one wand, it certainly is an option for you if your tradition and path allows it. You can have as many wands as you want, and as your path progresses, you're probably going to end up collecting wands as you go along. Because even though we may feel connected to a magical tool at one point in our practice, we are constantly developing our own personal style, our practice, our tradition. And because of that, what you felt connected to in the past, you may no longer feel connected to, and so you may want to change. So the next topic is what do you do if a wand breaks? So although you can have multiple wands at once, what do you do when one of them breaks? Whether accidentally or something happened to it, it really all depends on your personal tradition and also how bad the damage is. I have to admit, I have broken a wand or two in the past. Pretty certain I sat on one of them. I stood on another one. So everyone has wand breakages at one point or another. Whether it's catastrophic or whether it's just a small break really depends on what you do with it. So if you've dropped your crystal wand on the floor and it is completely broken into a million pieces, then I would suggest gathering up those pieces, saying thank you to the wand for its assistance, cleansing all of the pieces, and then disposing of it accordingly. If it's wood or something very natural, it can be returned to the earth, but if it is sharp, spiky, and potentially hazardous to the environment and to wildlife, I would suggest you dispose of it accordingly and safely. We don't want any wildlife getting hurt because you buried broken glass. But if it's a wooden wand, for instance, and it's just got a snap in it or a break, what do you do with it? Well, it really all depends on how you feel. If you feel that that damage is going to hinder your magical practice, then potentially it's time to put the wand to one side and replace it with a new one. But if you feel as though it's fixable, then I would fix it, whether that be with wood glue or whether that be with tape. You can even like wrap it with ribbon to keep it safe, wrap it with wire. There are so many creative things you can do with it. But it really all depends on how you feel and no one can really tell you what to do with your magical tools. So if you feel that a broken wand is salvageable and you would feel comfortable using it, then go ahead and save it. If not, it's no harm if you want to thank the tool for its assistance and dispose of it accordingly and then progress with your magical practice. You don't need to feel the need to salvage every single magical tool if you don't want to, but also don't feel the need to just bin it if you don't think it's necessary. So I would say go on your gut instinct as to what you do if you end up breaking a wand. So the last thing that I want to talk about is whether wands are actually necessary for successful magical practice. So as we've talked about, wands come in all different shapes and sizes. They're also found in lots of different traditions and you can use them in lots of different ways. But the main core of what a wand is, it's designed to direct and focus energy. And because of that, a wand isn't necessary. In fact, no magical tool is necessary for magical practice. Simply put, a wand is an extension of you, and because it's an extension of you, you can simply use your hands to conduct energy if you want to. It isn't something you need a wand for in order to undertake magical practice. Now, not everyone wants to use wands, but they want to use a magical tool, in which case you can use an athame for directing energy as well if you feel more drawn to an athame over a wand. You can also use something like a pencil if that's what you want to use, or you can simply go back to good old fashioned hands. And this is typically what I use for all of my workings. I rarely actually use a wand for anything. I primarily do everything with my hands because I'm able to conduct energy just as effectively, if not more effectively, with my hands than I am with a wand. And that is the key thing. If you don't feel it's necessary for you to have a wand and you don't really want one, then don't have one. If it's a tool that you aren't gonna use, what's the point in having it? I would say that if you're new, that if you don't know whether or not you want a wand, start energy manipulation with just your hands alone. And that way you can get a feel as to how you use your energy, whether or not you even need a wand in magical practice. There's no point in spending money on a really expensive fancy wand if you are never going to use it. And actually, wands can almost be a hindrance if you are a beginner. If you're new to energy manipulation, learn how to energy manipulate through your hands before you start trying to add an extension or a tool onto your hands. 
because if you can't do it through your hands, you're not gonna be able to do it any easier through a wand because it's just another step. You have to put it through the wand in order to project it. And so if you're unsure as to whether or not you want a wand or can use a wand, I would just start with your hands. Wands are a really nice magical tool to have, but are they necessary? Not at all. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a like. It really, really means so much to me to know that you guys enjoy the content on this channel. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or video ideas, feel free to post a comment down below. And if you've got this far in the video, let me know which element you associate with wands. Is it an air element or is it the fire element? I'm really curious to see what you guys associate with wands. And if you guys enjoy the magical content in this video and on this channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I post new magical content every Wednesday and every Saturday at 6 p.m. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.